All right, I guess it's recording. Is it? Can't tell. Who knows? Yes, it is. All right, sorry about that. So I'm going to make a video here just kind of recapping the logo project for people at home that maybe got behind or uh, need to finish this up. So I'm actually going to do a whole logo from beginning to end, uh, including exporting the STL. All right. So first thing you got to do is go to Google. All right. I'm going to search for an Autodesk logo. All right. This blue A. Something with something pretty simple. All right. I'm not going to get crazy here. So that looks like a good image. I'm going to right click on it. Save image as. That's a big one. 2000 by 2000 pixels. But I'll go for it anyways. Save it. There it is. All right, and I'll go into Autodesk Inventor. So what I did is, again, I right-clicked, saved as, saved it just right in the download section. I like to save stuff right into the downloads folder so that if it's got a virus or anything, it's in that folder because Windows Defender treats that folder somewhat specially. But anyhow, so from Autodesk Inventor now, I click New Part. All right, so this is your screen here. Um, it has this ribbon up here. These are different tabs with different options. We pretty much are using the sketch and 3D model tab. Sometimes we go to the view tab. For instance, you know, you can change the visual style. You can sometimes if you lose part of your interface, you can bring it back up and so on. So uh, anyhow, we usually start in the 3D model. This is your model browser over here, which I've explained this in another video, I know, but I'm just putting it all together here. Just kind of show the whole process. Um, so in here, we're going to click Start 2D Sketch. We're going to click the icon, not the words, the icon. I'm going to start it on this plane next, Z plane. All right, so I, those planes um, are built into the part. When you start a new part, those planes are automatically put into there. Um, that's why it takes a second for it to uh, run, to get going. Um, so I click the XZ plane. Now I'm going to put my image that I just downloaded in here to trace it. All right, so click Look In, Downloads, Autodesk logo. It's going to be huge, but that's okay. I place it, and if I click again, it's going to place it again. So I got two options here. I can either hit the Escape button on the keyboard, which is what I usually do, or you can right click and hit OK. Right. So I usually just hit escape on the keyboard, and that makes my cursor uh, do it, you know, back to just a regular arrow. Um, one tactic is, so on your mouse, you have the left mouse button, right mouse button, and the center scroll wheel, right? So I typically, it, it scrolls in and out wherever the cursor's at. So, you know, there's, it's going in and out. There we go. All right, so if I want to look at this corner. I can scroll in on that corner, this corner, I can scroll in on this corner, and so on. If I just want to recenter it nicely, I just hit the top button. All right, so I'm going to rotate it so I'm looking at it this way. Um, now I'm going to get, begin the process of tracing this. All right, actually, before I do that, let me just dimension this and make sure it's not too big. Yeah, 27 inches, forget that. Uh, I'm going to make it 4 inches. All right, then hit top again, and it'll bring me in there. So now I'm going to start my tracing. Start with a line. So the line is up here. All right. There's other options too. These arrows, they're splines. So if you've got a curved shape that you want to trace, you use splines. Um, but I'm going to start with a line. I'm actually going to start up here. I'll show you why. Because I want a bunch of these lines to just link together. You now, these three lines, I'm going to link them all together. All right, but now i got to hit Escape. All right, I'm going to start another line here. and make this line over here. Nope, it's trying to snap to be even with that line on the right. I'm not sure I want that. So if I zoom in a little bit, I can kind of defeat the snap that way. Maybe this one I should have made a little bit higher. It's kind of zoomed out. Uh, zoom in. So use that zoom wheel quite a bit. Hit Escape. Grab another line. Okay, so I'm going to show you something. See how it's trying to snap right here. It's not letting me put it right down there. 
If it's snapping and you don't want it to snap, hold down control on the keyboard. C-T-R-L, that's control. In the bottom left and also over on the right by the arrows. If you hold down control, the snapping gets turned off. Now, I'm not going to get crazy precise in this little edge here. I can see what it is. It's a ribbon is what it is. It's kind of like bent around. Um, I'm just going to kind of do that and not worry about it. Actually, I'm just to make this a little bit farther. Hit escape. Another line. All right, I'm holding down control. I don't want it snapping. Right there. And then I got one more straight line here. Now this one's going to be very important. You want to make sure it links up. All right, you want to make sure when you bring it over, it snaps onto that line. So you click. I'm pretty sure that linked up, but we'll find out. Sometimes you think a line is connected, but it's not. We'll, we'll see. Maybe it won't connect, and then I can show you how to troubleshoot that. Um, now up here, I need one more straight line. It's snapping, so I'm going to hold down control and click there. Now the rest of this, I'm going to accomplish with arcs. All right, so I click arc up here, and it's just a three-point arc. I know that's the option. So again, if you want the other options, you can go here, but I want a three-point arc. So the way that works is go here and here, and then make the arc. I'm going to go, you want to, you want to make sure that turns green. If it's yellow, it's not at the end. It's not linking up at the end. The green is important there. All right, so now this one, man, it just is not looking right. But you know what? I'm going to kind of split the difference. I want, I want, it, I want it to be tangent. I'm going to go like that. Not the best looking, but you'll see it doesn't really matter in the end. The model will look fine. That looks good. Zoom out, zoom in. Now this one, we're kind of in a similar situation here. I should have maybe been a little more careful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this big arc. All right. And then I guess what I will do is I'll go to an arc from here. Maybe like here, just kind of, that looks pretty good. I need another arc down here. I just hit escape on the keyboard, so i got to select the arc again. And there's other ways to do this. You could have used this, what's called a spline. And that's everything. Everything's traced. All right, finish sketch. Now, we're back in the home view. Now I need to extrude it. I hit extrude. All right, so that's good. We've got a nice uh, the line turned teal. That means it's a shape that I can extrude. It's a, it's a closed loop, we call that. It's a closed loop. That's good. This one's good. It's a closed loop. Uh-oh, this one's green. Something's not closed. So I'm going to hit cancel. All right, I'm going to go in back into my sketch here to figure out what's up. This corner down here looks a little fishy, if you ask me. So I'm going to go into my sketch. I'm going to double click on the icon for the sketch, not the text, the icon for the sketch. All right. I know this linked up good because they were just connected lines. Down here, I drew like a little extra line, I think. Yeah, that, that could have caused a problem. But first, I'm going to go check this corner and see what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, there it is. Holy cow, that's crazy. See that little overhang there, right there? That's the problem. That is the problem. So I'm going to trim that off. All right? I want this line to just end. I want this line to end as soon as it comes in and hits this arc. right? So let me go find out. Okay, so this part here, the hand, I just clicked the hand. It's the pan. You can move it around. I want to get rid of this inner part of this arc. So I'm going to hit trim. I'm going to go see if I can trim this part off. All right, so what that did is it got rid of that. I don't know if you caught that. I got rid of the this arc right here, the part that was overlapping in here. So now I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. I'm going to hit Extrude. Still have a problem. All right, so now i got to figure out what the problem here is. So I'm going to hit Cancel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click on Sketch 1. I'm going to run something called Sketch Doctor. All right, I'm in the sketch. I've clicked that. I know I'm in the sketch because this tab here is green. Right-click, Sketch Doctor, 
Diagonal sketch. Hit OK. You got an open loop. Ah, it is down there. I made the extra little line. I can tell. Right there. I'm going to hit next. Next. Close loop. Maybe it'll find it and close it for us. Ah, uh, okay. So it wants me to sketch curves until the loop is closed. So if you select these, hit yes. All right, I think it got it. It kind of changed the color of it a little bit. Let me hit escape. Let's go to finish sketch. Let's go to extrude. Yeah, I closed it. So it was down where I made that. And that happens all the time. It's like you make a little line to connect between two things. Some for some reason that happens. So I'm going to extrude this 0.5 inches. Uh, I'm going to make them three different sizes. I'm going to make the blue, this part, the tallest. And I'm going to hit OK. Now everything disappears. Don't freak out. You click this little arrow next to your extrusion. And then sketch one. It's still there. It's just not visible. You can see it's grayed out. So you right click on it, the right mouse button, right click. I'm going to use my middle finger for that. And I turn on the visibility. Now it's back. So I can hit extrude. Uh, I'm going to make this one 0.4. All right, hit extrude again. You have to do a new extrusion for each part that you want to be a different height. 0.3 there. All right. Now. That's cool. I mean, that meets the bare minimum requirements for this project here. I want to put it on a base or something, you know? It's, it's just kind of boring. So I'm going to go back into sketch one here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I want to do... Let's try offset. Check this out, what offset does. If it's fine. Nah, see, it's not finding that outer edge going to select that whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, oh, I don't know, what would be a good shape. Maybe I'll just like make a kind of roughly trace around it. You know, I don't know, something like that. You know, make a plate for it to sit on. Um, this is a this is pretty crude, but I just want to show you just the idea. If you do something that, then I, now I'm going to do an offset to this one. All right, so I clicked offset. It needs to be just a single closed loop, really, to, for it to work the way you want to. Hit finish sketch. Then I'm going to hit extrude. Oh, I'll make this like 0.1. Now let me show you something. See how it's red and it's hollow. That means it's trying to cut material out. We want it to join. We want it to add material. Some, anytime you set an extrusion and it's going to go into a previously uh, done extrusion, it changes this to be a cut extrusion. We want it to be a join. We want it to add more material in there. I hit OK. Uh, now I'm going to extrude this one. I'm going to go a join, but I'm going to make it 0.5, kind of like an outer rim. Hit OK. All right, so now yeah, that makes it look a little cooler, you know? I I don't know. Maybe you disagree. So I got my part done. It's good to go. Make sure you save it. File, save as. Save it just, you know, in your inventor folder. It makes a it makes a inventor folder um, in your documents. You know, it makes an inventor folder in there by default. That's a good place to save stuff. Um, I think you can get it on any computer if you do that. Um, we'll call this logo. Logo, whatever. Save. Now you have to export the CAD format. File, export, CAD format. All right. When you do this, you have to click Save as Type, STL Files. Then you got to go to Options and select High. And change your units to millimeters. It'll be centimeters the first time you do it. Mine was already set correctly because I had already done it before. I had already set it properly before. So hit OK. Um, and then save it. If you're in school, typically we just save your STLs to the desktop. And then we put them over in student chairs so then we can print them. But if you're home, 
save it right in your folder all right and go into your Google Drive and that shared folder I made for you and put your STL file on there so to do that um, you go to Google drive.google.com you'll see a folder that says like shared with me and you'll see the one I made for you and um, it's pretty self-explanatory what what that is all right you'll see it just then you got to put your then you got to figure out you got to click the little folder down here this is your file explorer all right click that then you go over here to documents and then you can get inventor um, and then your logo and then you can take this and just if you have Google Drive open you can just drag this into the folder right from here all right so that's the whole logo project from start to end I'm going to make a separate video for making the mechanical drawing. Um, I don't know about making mechanical drawings in Fusion 360. We'll see about that. All right. All right. Have a good one. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully this gets you going.